Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Out of Bed. I'm Mia Malkova, and here with Gabby Epstein, and today we have a special guest, comedian and actor, Harlan Williams. Welcome, Harlan. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. What Thank a you. what a treat. Thank you. No, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. I can't believe it. What's, oh, what's, a tea party? what's so unbelievable? Oh, yeah, yeah. This oh, is, wow. I, I'll just say it. Um, I'm going to start drinking tea because, one, I do, but I'm also working with the company. I don't know a lot of tea stuff. Like I'm not a tea. I'm not versed in teas. Like I'm, I don't know tea world real well. Like the way I wish I did. I wish I knew more about tea, but I don't understand. Like I, I just I'm don't. Just drink coffee. I just, well, I don't. Well, okay. But <laughs> tea's t a tough one for me. So we're kind of started off in a tough area for me. Area. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what tea. would you, what would you like to know about tea? Because I can help you. I, I'm. I've always really, honestly, just wondered how it's harvested, how how, mm -hmm. how it grows, uh, the origins of it, what countries uh, export it Sri the Lanka. most. What the? Pardon you. Sri Lanka. No thanks. I'm busy. Is like that. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest exporter of tea in the world. Where? Sri Lanka. Am I, am I saying that correctly? You are saying. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> Okay. Sri Lanka and, and how America. does it is it is it, a, is it a bean is it a is it a lettuce what how does it I was I was in animal a few years ago and we went on um like a day trip to see how it was made six hours I didn't learn, learn a damn thing I didn't pay attention at all all I ate was a little biscuits they brought me with the tea and we walked through fields and I didn't learn anything I did that with a cacao farm in Hawaii. I just ate like chocolate all day. Yeah. You kicked a cow? Me. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things to do. Oh, clearly a vegetarian. <laughs> uh, uh, can you tell me the rest of the IKEA story? Because we were talking about first dates outside. Oh yeah, first and dates. We were rudely interrupted, but I have to know how the date went. Yeah, so you go, uh, first dates, look, one of the big things when you date someone is, and I don't mean to be crude, but if you don't have sexual chemistry, it's probably not going to go the distance. Can we agree on that right out of the gate, yeah, ladies? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree on that. Yeah. Sexual chemistry, we can, we're on and, board. And by the way, I really think you can have sexual chemistry with somebody you don't find very physically attractive. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Wait, explain that one. Sometimes you just want dirty sex. Oh. With an with an ugly, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that. Or or or, <laughs> or maybe they're ugly, what? but they're ex like ex oh, I don't know how to explain it. And they're just radiating sexual energy, and you think, yeah, that's some. They'll be good. Oh, I see. So it's a, it's the energy. It's not necessarily the cleanliness. It's like the... Benny Blanco. <laughs> not the cleanliness. No, I don't find. I mean, I don't. Does he radiate sexual energy? Benny I feel Blanco? like he does because like he's hooked up with so many like models and actresses and stuff. I just assume that like he's very charismatic. I know that's why Pete Davidson gets them. I sense big dick energy there. But he's attractive. He is attractive. But he's, he's like a goofy attractive. We'll agree or disagree on that one. Oh, he's just straight attractive. Yeah, it's straight attractive. Oh, I think he's goofy attract. He's goofy hot. Okay, I'm gone. <laughs> you're, you're goofy hot. I am. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I feel. I, I personally, I feel like I'm more Donald Duck hot than Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're gonna laugh, maybe this isn't the podcast for me. Um, I'll disagree on that one as well. Um, please, please, I want to hear the story. Please continue. Oh, IKEA. Yeah. Well, well, you know, when you're you, you, when you know, the reason you go to IKEA for a first date is you really have to have good sexual chemistry with your partner. Okay. And what's great about Ikea is you walk through the showroom, they have at least 40 to 60 bedroom sets. <laughs> and and uh, you can just, you spend an afternoon and you can plow your way through Ikea, you throw down in every set. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, by the time you get through the Ikea showroom, you've probably been through 40, 60 bedrooms. Mm -hmm. You're having sex in all of them, and you know by the time you get to that checkout line where the meatballs are, hey, is this girl for me? Do we have sexual chemistry? Uh, and then you leave Ikea, and you know. and Full of meatballs? No. 
Huh? You leave Ikea full of meatballs? You could. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other bonus about having sex at Ikea is you get to use that Allen wrench. Have you ever seen these? Oh, I haven't. No. I've never you heard. haven't? You I've will. Never heard you of will. It. I will? Oh, yeah. It's coming. <laughs> What's how, how is that used? So an Allen wrench is it's like it, it's a it's like a weird little wrench. It's like it looks like a hockey stick, and okay. you use it to you get it with all the IKEA items, and you use it to tighten the mm-hmm. bolts. Okay. And uh, if you're with a girl or a guy, and there's some looseness, some flapping, uh, things that make whistling noises, if it's a windy day, you can just tighten the meat, <laughs> and with. Well, if people are going to laugh, maybe this uh, uh, isn't the podcast. Sorry, Harlan. You guys, can you not be rude to our guests? Sorry, Harlan. <laughs> Just trying to... Um, how many times have you done this? Is this like a, a default first date? Or do you switch it up? No, no. It's kind of where I like to go. Okay. Yeah. I kind of want to try How many this. times have you had to use the Allen wrench? Oh, you use it just about every time. <laughs> yeah. Most Where's people need on? a little tightening. Well, even, even with the men? Men, not as much, but when you get in there with the valley girls, boy, oh boy, you got to crank that thing about eight revolutions and then sometimes even have to go counterclockwise for the Vietnamese girls. Mm. Do you, do you yeah. walk in with like a, a tool belt with like your own now? No, no, they just... supply everything. That's the great thing about Ikea. It's like all inclusive. Shop. Everything's Swedish. Uh, everything's got, mm-hmm. even the names of the furniture can, can, you can almost call them sexual positions. Like if you're in one bedroom and you lay down, here we call it a bed, there you're laying down on the Nordeglerkten. Okay. And I love that. I love that he was probably just walking through Ikea one day and shopping for furniture, having his meatballs, and all this just came into his head. <laughs> like this is like, this is what you think about. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Sexual positions should be named after Ikea furniture. Yeah, the Nordeglerkten, mm-hmm. the Flinkt. Mm-hmm. The uh, Glungdeblergen and that one hurts, but you're gonna do, you're gonna want to do it. It's stre- leaves stretch marks. Uh, have you ever had a sexual uh, encounter and it left stretch marks? Not stretch marks, no. Well, it leaves stretch marks on you or your my partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I had That's a girl a come deal. in, ivory white porcelain skin. When mm-hmm. she left, she looked like a zebra. I mean, this girl stretch mark city, just and- all up and down her body. Do you get back to the same Ikea? Yeah. Is your face on the wall when you enter the building? I might have an employee of the month in the locker room. Oh, so they, they love you there. They love me. Okay. People who do the sheets don't, but the guys who put the furniture together do. I, I need to change furniture stores. Pardon you? I need to change furniture stores. Yeah, I would. They're okay with anything. Where do you buy furniture? I don't know, some hippie joint in West LA. They would never be okay with that shit. I do antique stores, but not anymore. I'm looking to sell them. What do you got? I love antiques. Do you? I have a lot of uh, Renaissance Revival furniture because my Great. other permit. What? Great. What do you? I know it's beautiful. What do you got? I mean, I can I can show you pictures after. Finally, somebody. Or, or first dibs. I love first dibs. Oh, I love mm-hmm. eating those at the movies. Yeah, me too. Just like all, all furniture, or just you know. I don't know. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable sleeping on someone else's bed that they'd slept in before. That would weird me out a little bit. Like the mattress or the bed? Great. Yeah. Great but, point. You yeah. just have a lot of trust. They wash the sheets thoroughly. Well, you know. You ever been to the Motel 6? No, I have not. I've You're, never been either. List, Do you like <laughs> crust? <laughs> Do I like what? Crust. Crust? Yeah. On pizza? Yeah. Well, we're talking <laughs> Motel 6. Okay. That kind of crust. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things I have to do in life, and Motel 6 is one of them. Martel what? Motel 6. Motel 6, yeah. I oh, don't know. I feel like I'm classier than that. I get- <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely classier than that. I at least need a Best Western. <laughs> That's Best a bare Western. minimum. <laughs> yeah, for you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just once, 30 sex at Motel 6. I wonder how many, like, actual prostitutes go through motel sixes is that is that a real thing yes like they go hit up the the motel six. carlos was so quick with that answer it's concerning have you have you had a prostitute i have I'm not at a motel six though just in your car not my car either mia Where? They, a, they've been like nice hotels a nice like hotel an escort? like a high-end escort exactly Ooh. he's a classy man how much are they um between like 500 and 1200 that's a high-end 
Yeah. I know. Are they hot? Mia, you could do way better, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> Are they hot? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. More like girls next door. Like, yeah, it's cool. I wish I was a guy. Do you have any experience with this? What was him? Prostitutes. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Okay. So we're relying on Carlos for all our information. TD information. <laughs> Are you married or do, are you with No, somebody? I'm not with anybody right now. I mean, I hope not if he's having sex in Ikea beds. <laughs> well, that's just True. the dating scene. But no, no, nobody at the moment. How about you? I am in a relationship, yeah. I right. like relationships. Oh, awesome. Great guy. He's very sweet. He's very funny. <laughs> um, what color eyes? <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> it's not going it's only, that well. It's only been two years. They're blue. Are you? If I'm, if I'm they're blue, but they're they're like years, they're can... they're grayish blue. Say the color of my eyes. Yours are an obvious blue. But, yeah, if, His are not an obvious blue. I don't look at them and go, oh, those are blue eyes. If if I was your boyfriend, and someone asked me what color your eyes would be, I would guess like what thirty six F. Right. You bitch. Thirty six F. So her, her eyes color. are the color of a jet fighter. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Whoa, that's a color I haven't seen in a while. You know, it's just one in a million. Wow. <laughs> you know? Seeing it right now, but yeah, you do have nice eyes. What Thank what you. color are they? Would you say I'm, they're a little like bluish greenish type of deal? They're hazel. Yeah, that's they're what, hazel. hazel. Yeah. So, so green with the hazel mm -hmm. around the middle. So do you have Beautiful. any? Do you have any See, I don't know what color your eyes are. I feel like you have the sneaky blue eyes. Yeah, See, yeah. Right? You wouldn't really look like you, I see blue. You have the sneaky blue. Mm. You just have to really get close and like look in, you know, on top of that Ikea bed. Yeah. Just really close to see it, yeah, to appreciate yeah. it. Tight, you know? get tight. Like mm -hmm. my dad used to say, get tight, son. <laughs> What's tight? Just means get in tight. Oh. My dad used to love coming real tight. He, he had one of these things where he, he didn't think I was listening to him. So yeah. he'd come in real tight. And that's where I first learned about uh, two things, gingivitis and halitosis. <laughs> and uh, God, my dad on a hot day he smelled like a dirty grilled cheese sandwich from the back of a Greek restaurant. Just as at breath, like somebody scrubbed thumbtacks in a men's bathroom down in the uh, same building that that fucking guy shot Kennedy. Is, is that why you like Motel 6? It's like nostalgia? Oh, I didn't say I liked Motel 6. Oh, it's Listen, just here, let me look. Last time I went to Motel 6, I walked in, it said breakfast in bed in the lobby. I got up to the room, someone had barfed an omelet all over the bed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's just an option. It's not a preference. Yeah, I'm just throwing it around for you guys. Okay. I don't I don't necessarily want to be there. Okay. Yeah. A All nice right. recommendation. Yeah. Uh so <laughs> Okay, so if you're gonna first if you're on a first date, it's always IKEA. Not always. I, what else do we have? I, I need mean, ideas. What are your first dates? Yeah. Um, I usually I don't like dinner first dates. I like to put them under pressure and see how they are under stress. What is you know? what is stress? Skydiving? Just anything, com <laughs> anything competitive, you know. Like uh, I went bowling. Okay. On a last first That's date. A cute first date. Didn't go great. I'm I'm very competitive and a really bad loser. So he said it, it was really nice getting to know me and spending time with me, and I told him to fuck off because I was losing. Sorry, I wasn't. You know, it could have gone better. But at least he knew what he was getting himself into. You told him to F off like for real or in a playful way? In my head, it was playful. But if I was a third party, definitely aggressive. So how did he take it? As aggressive or playful? Aggressive, yeah. And I, that, that I, was I, the end of the date, dating? I mean, we had to do a couple more rounds of bowling until I won. I wouldn't, you know. Oh, so it didn't end the date. didn't kill the date. No, it didn't, it didn't kill the day. Kill the vibe really quick. He was like, oh, okay. This is not mm. going to be cute and sweet. This is actually, you know, going to be still seeing him? No, shocking. Uh -oh. I'm sorry, Bad. Gabby. I'm really sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm not. If he... We are. I mean, I'm He sounded I'm like a good guy. He sounded great. Yeah, he did. Very <laughs> athletic he was, and fun. And yeah, like he was just perfect you for you. <laughs> well, I think we're on our side. And 
<laughs> Gabby, I mean, what about the guy you grabbed his mouth? Oh yeah, that's. I mean, that's a that's a good first date for me. I've had some bad ones. You grab somebody's mouth. I was in a car with a guy, and he was driving, and he said something like kind of sassy, but like trying to be cute. And I grabbed his face like this, like reach up, grabbed his face in a playful way. But I didn't know he had, you know, like there's Invisalign or retainer things where it's like the sharp, um, yeah, sharp things attached to the side of your teeth. Yeah. I cut this man's mouth from cheek to lips open and his mouth filled with blood. And did you tell him to fuck off? <laughs> um, I didn't. But the whole the whole dinner, he couldn't talk. So he basically didn't talk the whole first Perfect. day because, right? I just got to eat in peace because his whole mouth was full of blood. Wow. <laughs> and You're cute, but I don't think I'd want to take you on a first date. And, and then we dated for years. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it. Thank you. <laughs> it's we, a little scary, huh? Thank you. Thank we did, uh, you for we, we dated for four years, so I think the scary thing kind of worked, but you know. Wow, you're a very, uh, very aggressive, toxic person. <laughs> That's not the first time I've been told that. So. Yeah, well, that's okay though. But the good thing is you know who you are. I'm very self-aware. And people going out with you get it immediately. That's what I'm saying. That's that's good. Why why would you want to waste three months trying to figure it out? I'd rather someone know straight away. You know. Do you have a guy now though? Probably. No. <laughs> oh, solo. Mm-hmm. Damn. What are you looking for? What kind of beef? What kind of beef? Yeah. Um, that's the problem. I don't know. Just normal and funny. You know? You, uh, you think... like Swedish furniture at all or? <laughs> I can get accustomed to it. You know? I can learn to like pronounce to the names. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> you ever had an Allen wrench in your ass? <laughs> no. You will. Okay. <laughs> Friend of yours? Yes. <laughs> what makes you think your ass is loose? Well, look at her. <laughs> this is going down a weird road, and I'm okay with it. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Do you know. Advice to me? Another advice? Thing? Yeah. Yeah, just keep being you. See, the problem is too many people are superficial mm -hmm. and they try to hide who they are. But you put it all out there right at the start so oh, people yeah. know what they're getting, which is to. a good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to make it harder for you to meet someone just because you are a bit volatile. But <laughs> the person that gets it and can connect with it, you're through the door. And once you get through that door, things are going to go well. There's no yeah. games. Mm -hmm. There's no masquerading. It's just all you, baby lumps. Just be weird from the start. Well, don't be weird. Don't go out and just be you. Which is what you're doing. Okay. We got the fuck offs. We got the bleeding I, mouth thing. I didn't mean that. It just it came out like a reflex. Yeah. Like I, I really, honestly, as soon as, as soon as I said it, I regretted it. <laughs> but I'm very competitive, and it just it was like a reflex reaction. I just told him to fuck off, and I was like, I really shouldn't have said that. But you know, it how was, did he take it? Did he tell you to f off? No, he was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that reaction. I said something very nice and sweet to you and you told me to fuck off because you're losing a bowling game. Hmm. You know? Sounds a bit sensitive. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. That sounds like a him problem. Yeah. It. Thank you. That's yeah. why we're friends. You know, just the unconditional support. I'm not the problem. It's them. He has a him problem. So he's a church guy. <laughs> Now that I think about it, I'm like, Man. that could be the problem. You tell a church kid to fuck off, and that doesn't go down with him or the Holy Lord, host of the Lamb. That is true. So lighten you know? up there, uh, sawdust ass, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, whatever your friends say. I don't yeah. know what they say. You know what they say? What? No, I, I'm asking. You don't know what they say? I don't know. I was just guessing. Sawdust ass. I kind of want to say that now. You just do. use it. You will. Okay. I'm learning so much from you. I'm very grateful for this. Yeah. You know? No worries. Me, you don't have any bad first dates? Um, not that I can remember. Like, mm, I haven't had that many first dates because I just keep getting into relationships. Like, I go on a date and turn into a long-term relationship. Instantly. Yeah. Instantly. So no nothing bad. Not that I can think of, they all they've all ended in sex. I've ne I've never had a first date 
that didn't end in sex. The first date, you you go Almost for it always. Never, How come? Because I, if I'm going on a date with somebody, I know that I want to sleep with them already, or I wouldn't go on a date with them. Wow. Yeah. Well, if, if this relationship doesn't work out, please take your next first date to IKEA, please. I, I'm a little scared, afraid of that. Why? I don't want to get arrested. No one's arresting you. <laughs> no one's arresting you. Oh, they, don't worry. They encourage it at IKEA. Do they? Oh yeah, Sweden has its own rules. I thought there was yeah. families there. There are. It's interesting. The word uh, incest ring a bell? It does. It does? Okay. <laughs> okay. I got confused with that conversation. <laughs> so IKEA is a free fall. It's basically what we've learned. I mean, have you obviously you've watched like older movies and you know say tribal films? They would just fucking tribal films. What a tribal. That sounds weird about it. <laughs> what a tribal I, film. Native Americans. <clears throat> I don't know exactly which ones, but they all fucked in the tent in front of their kids. Because it, it seems like a very normal thing to do back then. Well, do you have any what? names of these movies? Like titles. Dances with Wolves? Dances no, with but wolves. they don't fuck in front of the kids in that one. I don't even know if they fuck in that one. Okay, so if I get caught having sex in Ikea, I'll say, guys, <laughs> you're overreacting. <laughs> they fucked in tents. In what movie? I don't know. <laughs> in this tribal movie that I'll Google. Um, so it's fine. Wait, you're you know? telling me this doesn't happen in films? Like? Native Americans, <laughs> or, or say Vikings, and like it's just anyone intense in the olden days. Why don't we just fast forward <laughs> to the tents down on La Brea and walk in there on any given night? That's probably true. I don't, that's Pete the, Davidson and some other dirties getting it on. You know, <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, yeah, yeah it's not a bad sight. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. You know, yeah. If you can have sex on Venice Boulevard in a tent, you should be have be able to have sex in IKEA. Yeah. Right. You're obsessed with Ikea. <laughs> I haven't been there in so long, and the last time I put together a piece of furniture, I think I still have PTSD from it. You know? PTSD? From putting together Ikea furniture. What does that mean, PTSD? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. So shouldn't it be PTSD? Did, what did I say? E? See, so trying to are you did trying I say to like, like an acronym okay. for Thank you. Dick? Is that what you're trying to No, penis? no. Penis? Oh, sorry. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> What's on my mind? <laughs> what is on I don't my know mind? Acronym. There's not even a P in there. What is an acronym? I don't even know Isn't that. Isn't it um, like uh, an abbreviation for something? I could, yeah. yeah. It is? It's not an abbreviation. Like, like, or say what IKEA would stand for, I, each of the letters. Uh, IKEA stands for insufficient Incest. knowledge. Insufficient Consensual. knowledge. No, it's a K. Executing. No, no, no. I, I, no I, I, please, I really wanted to see Holland's explanation of what IKEA stands for. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, IKEA, I, insufficient knowledge, assembling something. I don't know. Because they're hard, it's hard to put their furniture together. Insufficient knowledge, eating and assembling. We just add a couple extra words. Yeah. There, you know? Yeah, Thank that's, you. That Eating works. for the meatballs. It's basically what it is. Yeah. You just go there for the meatballs. Yeah. You know? Have you had the meatballs there? Not in a while, but... I've had them once. They were whatever. Mm. Nothing special. They're really good. <laughs> are you uh, Are you healthy at all? Do you like health food? Yeah. What oh, do you, yeah. What do you like to eat? I love drywall. I mean, the fiber. The fiber <laughs> in that stuff. Just yeah, but um, wow. I like uh, like health food. Um, salmon. Salmon's good. Salmon. Tell me about salmon. You know about salmon, the electrolytes and the <laughs> carbonated uh, fr 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 the gyrometers uh, or the what are they? The cornathian uh, dinjameters or what's in a salmon? <laughs> Omega three. Omega yeah, fatty. Yeah, that's it. Is that what yeah. You're yeah. Yes. <laughs> What what else are the things you need the uh, in a salmon? Protein? Yeah. Yeah. Do you love salmon? Fuck with salmon. Yeah. What do you mean you fuck with salmon? I fuck with salmon hard. Really? <laughs> yes. 
you get chapped? <laughs> well, no, because it's a bit moist. Oh, wow. Head yeah. first or tail first? Head first. The only way. The only way. <laughs> it is the only way. <laughs> okay. um, chicken, let's see, chocolate, tea, coffee, and sweet potatoes. I have a small food group. Are you weird about right. certain foods? No. I love food. I just, just on a day-to-day basis, I eat the same thing. Okay. I get the oatmeal every morning for breakfast. Every day. Every That's day. basically drywall. Right, fiber. Same thing. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. Oatmeal's delicious. I don't it think is we delicious. like that. I mean, you like that. <laughs> we don't want that in our house. <laughs> you like drywall, so it's it's the same thing. Yeah, but... Just add a bit I of have water. drywall in my house. You do? Yeah, I'm in the cool club. Okay. Then to me, you live in a gingerbread house, really. <laughs> like I would eat your house down to the ground in a you come fucking over. Marie Osmond minute. Yeah, you should, you should come over for dinner sometime. Okay, what are Heart you doing meal? tonight? <laughs> I might go see Dune. <sighs> I'd be better off just going to a sandbox at the schoolyard and <laughs> wait for a wind to pick up. Yeah, This is true. I haven't yeah. seen it, but I'm guessing. The first yeah. one was kind of hard to get through. Yeah, this so You're going worse. to see the second one if mm-hmm. the first one was bad? I heard the second one is better. Like, But the first one, it wasn't bad. I still thought it was well done in a lot of ways, but it was, it was a little on the boring side. It has a very slow start. Same deal. And I love I love like sci-fi and fantasy. I do too. I wanted to love it. I went to see it. It was three hours of people running around in the sand, brooding. There's no conversational moments like this. Mm-hmm. The whole movie is like, we must get over to the kingdom and pick up the sand. It's every everything's a statement. Everything's brooding. Everyone's uh, giving these stern looks. There, I, there were some of the actors who I really felt didn't fit, like Jason Momoa. Yeah. What, is, what is Jason Momoa doing there? <laughs> yeah. I only picture like everyone else is so serious and better actors. I fucking love Jason Momoa, but. You know, he has he has a type of movie. That and it's him walking out of the that. ocean. And that's it, right? Oh, well, also on a horse and, you know, that's true. doing yeah. his Khaleesi Wait, from Wait, Jason behind. Momoa's not in it. Yes, he is. Isn't that the guy who plays Aquaman? Yeah. Is it- he's not in Dune, he's in the, too. He's in the first one. Oh. I haven't seen the second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird movie. It's, it's a- also the guy from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I think he's the wrestler. Yeah, he's he plays one it. of the baddies. Batista. Yeah, he yeah. felt out of place to me too, and I loved him in Guardians of the Galaxy. Too, but it's just like um, some people who you in your head they play a certain role, and then they just don't belong in that that world. Oh yeah, like if you see Daniel Radcliffe in anything besides Harry Potter, you're like go back to Hogwarts. Like uh, what are you doing here? No, 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 no. He's he's Thank you. he's stepped Thank out of the welcome. box for me. He because he plays really odd and strange roles. Like like what character? Um, the woman in black. What is that one film where he's he's a dead body? Oh, and yeah, he's a dead the Swiss Army man. He plays a dead body. He plays a dead body through the entire film. That's my dream job as an actress. (laughs) Just (laughs) this one. If I could get paid to just lie there and play a dead body. No, he doesn't just lie there. He doesn't lie there. I think that he's because I've actually never finished it. I've tried to watch this movie about five times. Because I feel like I would love it, but there's a specific scene where he's crossing the ocean on Daniel Radcliffe's body using the gas from his to propel his body forward. So he's just farting the whole time, and I can't get past that scene. I always shut it off. So he's not dead. No, he is dead. I, 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 think, he's, I think he's a, like, the dead body that he's toting around, I think, is a figment of his imagination because he's stranded on an island. At least I think. I haven't seen the whole film. But yes, the, this 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 furthers my point. Just it's like an go imaginary back to Hogwarts. friend. Go back to Hogwarts. You know, it clearly was not successful for him. I uh, think. Well, I, my humble I, opinion. I think he's. I'm with you, guy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> that did not make me want to see the movie at all. What a guy <laughs> farting across the ocean. Yeah. You don't want to see that. No, it's shockingly. <laughs> What about a guy taking a dump at KFC? Does that turn your crank? I mean, I, I live in LA. We can go see that for free. We don't have to pay to go see that in the movie theaters. She's right, kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And I, that's free entertainment in LA. <laughs> wow. You know? Yeah. God. Hogwarts. Do you like any of the fantasy or sci-fi? Uh, sure. I love, uh, what? Yeah, but Dune was just, it was too mixed, right? Because all of a sudden you've got all these spaceship shooting laser beams at the enemy. Mm -hmm. Then the enemy's shooting laser beams back, like sophisticated futuristic laser beams that could shoot across a galaxy. Yeah. And then they all jump out of the spaceship and pull out swords and start having sword fights in the middle of the desert. I guess the lasers weren't really cutting it anymore. <laughs> so let's get out the, uh, the, you know, the Swiss Army knife and go at each other. It was just too many mixed messages in that yeah. movie. Yeah. It's very similar to Star Wars, but at least Star Wars has lightsabers, which is much cooler. Yeah. Than sword. Star Wars was a simpler story to follow, right? I Whereas think Dune isn't it is considered just... the dumbed down version of Dune? Aren't they? Was didn't the Dune storyline come first? I I couldn't I tell no you. Idea. I don't know. I mean, I like Mad Max. That's the other. That's the the desert one, right? They're in the desert. Yeah. I was now just fucking shit up. Yeah, but now it's Mad Maxi Pad. They've made it all about a woman. Oh man, I hate when they do that. Right? Do they do they actually make it work? Oh yeah, it's like so they had Mad Max, which was about a guy named Max. Yeah. And then they did a remake and suddenly Charlize Theron with one hand and you know, facial dirt, suddenly she's dominating the Mad Max movie. And now this new one they're putting out, like the word Max isn't even in the title, it's some girl. It's like some Girl who weighs four pounds, and we get to believe that she can kick the shit out of everyone. Oh, Furiosa. this girl. Uh, it's just like, yeah. From, um. Look, Ferosa, a Mad Max saga. Chris, like, Chris what happened to Max? It's just, <laughs> it's just like, it's like the Maxi Pad Festival now. Like, get, get fucking Max back. So you have Chris Hemsworth in there, and the girl from. What was she on on Netflix? Um, the chess film. She's fucking shit up. The Queen's Gambit. The girl from Queen's Gambit is fucking shit up over Chris Hemsworth. Okay. Well, yeah, another movie I'm not going to see. There's a reason I haven't heard of it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Does it actually come out soon? We haven't heard of it? Yeah. Um, Probably out. the summer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, just make a movie called Mad Maxine for the girls mm -hmm. and let us men keep our heroes. It's we like Mad Max. We like... A rogue dude who's wandering the desert killing people. We like a tough guy. We yeah. don't want to see a woman. I don't want to see a woman driving an 18 wheeler, being all tough, acting like a dude. Like, if you want to I make that either. movie, make it. Neither. But it's, don't it's, take uh, away the existing movie that we had and replace it with a woman. Like, just make a new one. It's unrealistic. It's unrealistic. And also, know your audience. This yeah. one's an anomaly. Like, most women, I'm not watching Mad Max. Like, that movie looks like shit. I, I love to me. <laughs> I, I, so uh, like I still heard you even like this. <laughs> I love Mad Max. But I want to see a man do that because, you right. know, I'm, I agree. I don't want to do that shit. I want to stay home. Please yeah. go fight people and fuck shit up in an 18-wheeler. And then I'll stay at home, do yeah. Pilates, and wait for you to come back. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see men be fantasy. men, for God's sake. Let men be tough and stop taking all these masculine roles away from the dudes. I, don't I see one more movie where an 86-year-old Charlize Theron's <laughs> beating the shit out of fucking 90 CIA guys and, and Navy SEALs with one hand tied behind her back. It's like, I ain't cutting it, man. I don't think that's any woman's fantasy either, you know? No, no, they have to be um, in a Marvel film for it to, to be cool. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Yeah, because then they got superpowers. So exactly. You, but even it still, look sense. at Black Widow. Like That tanked, right? Everyone else, you got the Hulk who can crush the planet. You got Thor with a hammer. You got Spider-Man. They've all got powers. And then Black Widow shows up and it's uh, some chick in, in black spandex and knows some karate moves. <laughs> but who, who asked for this? Because I feel like if you surveyed women... We're very okay with shirtless Chris Hemsworth mm. on screen right. for three hours. So like who's that making is, this stuff? I, I honestly think if they polled a group of women, 98% of us are like, yeah, we're, we're very okay with, you know, 
I mean, to be perfect, Shirtless men if I'm, if I'm being honest, I'm very okay with the man being in the masculine role and then fucking the hot chicks. Like, <laughs> that's what I want You mean do. the way it's always been? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I don't want to see her fighting. and. Now, by the way, you make a movie called Wonder Woman- and I love it. Exactly. Like the first Wonder Woman, it was about her. She's the focus. She's Wonder Woman. She kicks out. Amazing. And it makes sense. But you're, why, why don't we wonderful. take Wonder Woman and make her Wonder Man? You don't yeah. see that. Yeah. So quit taking the men roles away. Leave us the F alone. Go make the women movies if you want to, but leave the men ones alone. <laughs> I am. I mean, I love that. You know, it, it just sets a standard for men too. So yeah. you go to that movie with the guy, you come back and you're like, you know, I can you can put my Ikea furniture together. Chris Hemsworth just, yeah. you know, killed like 97 people in three hours. Well, I grew <laughs> this, up this on- This dress art, you know, you can handle that, right? I grew up on Clint Eastwood, Bruce Willis, Tom Cruise, all these tough guys. What are the boys growing up to today? It's like Mad Maxine and all these women are mm-hmm. tougher than men. And it's like, well, what are the, what are the young boys supposed to think? Do you think like let them have both, but stop taking away the the ones that 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 uh, boys and men should have. You know. Yeah, I agree. Do you think Rightly. a lot of young guys are really soft because of that? Yeah. This is no male role models. That's part of it. Okay. I think studies are showing that their uh, dating is going down dramatically in co- on college campuses, and men are losing their virginity later. Really? So it's because build- they don't want to date. Yeah, they they're afraid of dating. They don't know how. They're women mature faster, and it's just they're surpassing them. I think for every two women in college, there's only one guy at that same college. I'll be honest. I think that cancel culture is terrifying our youth of today. Because mm-hmm. it, in my opinion, from what I've seen. It makes it seem like just interacting as two like youthful people figuring it out can lead to disastrous results. Mm-hmm. Like it has everyone scared to do anything. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> it was jam. I'm just kidding. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay? I, so. I lost my train of thought. Do you do you wanna do you wanna go? No, keep going. This thing was jammed and I tried to fix it. I should have brought a woman in. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we do have a tech team full of guys, so that's on, that's on them. Sorry, keep I'm Sorry, I yeah. apologize. It's all good. You know? I, I just think they're soft. They're a lot softer than they than Right? They used that's to be. you saying it. So, what, yeah, yeah. What, what do women think? What, if women are thinking it, what are the poor boys supposed to do, right? It's, 100%. It's a sad state of affairs. I mean, I, I grew up with like two younger sisters, and we grew up you know, catching like snakes and lizards and like we grew up as tomboys. We had skateboards. My dad taught me how to gut a fish. Maluluba? Maluluba? That was almost correct. Is that where you grew up? No, I grew up on the Gold Coast in Australia. That's where Maluluba is. How close is that? Maluluba? Right uh, right up the north of the Gold Coast, just right there. Yeah, it's kind of close. Yeah. Yeah. Snake and bug country like you were talking about. Mm Mm-hmm. Very, very There it is. Look at that. Look at that baby lumps, mm-hmm. but um, <laughs> but th- that's how we grew up, and I like, like both my sisters as well. So when I come to LA and guys are scared of a spider or scared of rejection or can't talk to a girl or can't change a tire, I'm like I I don't know how to talk to you. I like that. Can't change a tire. So many th- guys can't even change a tire these days. Very true. I think Although- that's, I think that's my problem with like dating here. Mm. You know. Like, I, my, my 18th birthday, I got a spear gun. So it's like, I can't, you know? It's what? hard to relate to men here sometimes. Yeah. You know? I'm okay with men not being super masculine. It's the mental, it's the mental state that bothers me. What's when the I, mental state? Just when I see somebody just, like, very whiny and not able to handle a lot. Oh, I hate that. It I really, hate it really bothers so much. me. Or like little things happen, and suddenly they're traumatized, and their whole world crashes. I just want to hit him in the face. <laughs> mm. 
I want to hit you in the face. (laughs) 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 Sorry, go ahead. Oh, where is this from, Ikea? (laughs) Guys? Uh, Yeah, can you fix it for me? Actually, I didn't didn't get a concussion last time Richie fixed that, so. It's just really loose and it just, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. God. (laughs) Sorry, please. After you. Are you a sensitive soul? Yes. Why? <laughs> because I like cinnamon. I like cinnamon I like too. Cinnamon all over my body. It's spicy. <laughs> I think, yeah, of course I'm a sensitive soul, but I would never show it. I would never expose it. I would never say it. I would never tell you girls that I sit at home at night and watch Mad Maxine on Blu ray covered with mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that secret. Yeah. Very deep. Very no deep. way I'd tell you two that. <laughs> but yeah, of course I'm sensitive. Look at me. I think you can you can be all the, have all those masculine traits and know how to change a tire and, and Hell yeah. have some sensitive qualities, but it's gone too far. I can change a tire, gut a fish, mm-hmm. and sing Elvis to you in the moonlight on the same day. One Sounds more could have gone possibly Can I have that for my <laughs> first date? I actually would take that, that for my amazing. first date. <laughs> that sounds incredible. It does. Yeah. Right? That works yeah. for me. And then everyone here is, every guy here is also in therapy. It's something I've always oh, discovered. Shit, yeah. <laughs> Wait, therapy's great. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> Wait, why I, can't they? Be, you're, you've been in therapy. Why can't they go to therapy? I genuinely believe, and look, I'm not a doctor, but I think Ow. that talking about your problems constantly is not good for your mental state. Mm-hmm. I think it I agree exacerbates with that. the problem. I think people who really need therapy, who have been through really serious things in life, great. Go to therapy, get the help you need. Most people are going to therapy because a girl rejected them in their senior year. Wait, she got... She got hypnotized because she couldn't get over a boy. Yeah. Oh, That's no. worse than therapy. Not really. I could have <laughs> Absolutely not. I did a cheat code. I could have paid thousands of dollars for years to go to therapy. Two hypnotherapy sessions. Wait, you think it would have taken you years to get over him? <laughs> no, but to go to therapy because they keep you coming back cuz they say it's like not a a quick fix. You know, it's like a lifetime commitment. Mm-hmm. You know what was the element about him that you couldn't get over? What made him a standout over the other losers? <laughs> um, I I think it was because I it was the first person I started dating when I moved to LA from Australia, and I didn't really know anyone else. We started dating straight away, and then COVID happened, so he was kind of like the only person that I knew or hung out with. And like I don't go out or go to clubs or bars or anything like that. I'm a big homebody, so it was kind of like losing my one sense of like stability or I have no family here either so he was like kind of my everything which is not a healthy way to be um but hypnotherapy works if you ever so you're completely over the guy now yeah it's crazy Mm -hmm. you know I I was I was such a I was such a skeptic go get hypnotized in two sessions they're like you're done I'm like okay and it works. Whereas therapists were like, I will see you next week and every Wednesday for the next 14 years. You know? So I do agree that when people sit around and dwell on their problems, they just make it worse for themselves. And mm-hmm. a lot of the time they victimize themselves. So I, I'm also not one of those people. But I think having an outlet every so often, you don't have to go to therapy every week. But you just go, you can you can go every couple weeks. We have an outlet. Everyone on the phone has a podcast. We all have outlets. We're good. <laughs> we don't want our therapy. <laughs> we don't want that coming out here. You <laughs> see it as a form of weakness that a man would have to go in and talk about his feelings. No, I, I, I just think, I think everyone's just soft. I think people, the problems they're talking about aren't really that serious. I right. think... We all have... Like if you transposed the kids here Mm -hmm. to Cambodia, Mm -hmm. you think a kid on Cambodia eating a zebra femur in a (laughs) ditch with a bicycle tire spinning on his head (laughs) even thinks about going to therapy? He's like, well, another day in Cambodia. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow I'll eat some uh, walrus lips, you know? (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's But here it's like, oh, Christ, the Starbucks is closed. I better get to my therapist. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) 
Come on. Are you okay? Hurt. Come on, let me well, grab that. Keep hurting yourself. Just something. <laughs> so sorry about God, that. dude. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh. Did everyone sign the liability waiver on this? Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <No. God. laughs> um, but that's my point. I think that people have no perspective on what on how life. You're right, baby lumps. I usually am. You know. You're not wrong, but at the same time, you're not wrong. <clears throat> you're not wrong, mm-hmm. but at the same so I'm time, right, basically the opposite of being wrong. I think it. Well, I I think that. There can be more than one right to it. So I, I think that when you feel something, it's valid to feel that way, but to sit there and dwell on it makes a is what makes a difference. So say if if I if I'm hungry and my favorite spot's closed, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be annoyed. I'm gonna be aggravated by it. But I'm not gonna sit here and think, well, at least I'm not in Cambodia. Right. <laughs> well, to your point. Ah, <laughs> Can we just take the mic away from him? Oh, I think there's a mic here. Yeah. Like, oh. Do you want to share the mic with me? Oh, it's, if you could just oh. adjust this whore, so this sorry. thing. It's bending on you. Good God, good? bend it like Beckman. <laughs> I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> And he touches it. And he touches it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> Go ahead. It's this thing. You were in Cambodia? No, I don't want to be in Cambodia. Why not? It doesn't sound like a nice place to be. Wow, that's pretty judgmental. Yeah. That's okay. You gotta go. You'd love it. What would I love about it? It's a marketplace. They got pig heads. Wow. Yeah. Are you speaking from hooks. experience? Yeah. Really? They got pig heads hanging on hooks in the marketplace. <laughs> Not going to say a word. Should I grab that again? <laughs> no. Why don't you uh, grab yourself a toolbox and, uh, an Allen wrench? Fry and <laughs> suck a bag of fucking corn dogs. <laughs> like baby lumps. <laughs> What's baby lumps? That's you. Oh, that's me? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm baby, okay, cool. I'm baby lumps now, I guess. What does it mean? Oh, I, I don't. Just... I don't want to ask. I don't want to know. It's like a, it's a term of endearment, you know. Okay. Sugar, sure. sugar lips. There you go. <laughs> I think I like baby lumps better than sugar lips. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, if we, if we can pick, love baby lumps. If I had to choose between that and sugar lips, yeah. How how do we get here from therapy? <laughs> <laughs> you know. What's your little thing? What's your what's your guy call you? What's your little nickname? Bubba Wompkins. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Wasn't I would a throw up. From Hogwarts? I, I would meant- throw up. I would throw up. I would immediately throw up. I do, I, I do too. I go through the house. I'm like, Bubba Wobbikins. Oh, God. That's what old people do in the sponge bath. <laughs> oh, Christ. Zelda just did a bubble Wompkins. <laughs> Fucking lock the door. I would never have sex with that man again. If you call me Bubba Wompkins, are you fucking kidding me? Does he say it while now? you're having sex? No, no, of course not. Oh, He's... harder, harder, Bubba Wompkins. Bubba, harder. Bubba Wompkins. Now it's uh, Wompkins? Yeah. Or Pumpkins. I get called Pumpkins. Oh, my God, was. <laughs> oh, here he comes. And do you, wait, do you, do you, do you, do you like this? I don't mind. Is it, it is it cute to you, or does it give you like a little bit of an ick? I I was really against pump pumpkins at the beginning. I refused to be called pumpkins. He'd say, "Are you a pumpkin?" And I said, "No, that doesn't exist." And then um, in? pumpkin. It's a oh, made up pumpkin. word. A year like in, someone saying pumpkin with a lisp. Yeah, a okay. year in, it wore on me, and now a I, year I, in, he yeah. kept saying it for a year after you said you didn't like it. Yeah. Did you wait? How did it go a year? I'm so confused. Did you just allow this man to call you this and you hated it for 365 days? Well, it's not the worst thing in the world. I'm not in Cambodia. <laughs> that's that. That's true. It is perspective. But you're just like, hey, can you, can you call me something different? Because this makes me want to throw up my mouth. No. You didn't say that? I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. I thought it was funny. It's, oh, I am. Yeah. You like it? I, I like it now. What I, do you call him? Bubba Wubbikins. Oh, my God. Oh, so it's a double Bubba Wumpikins? I Well, I'm sorry. I get called Pumpkin. He gets called Bubba Wubbikins. Wow. Yeah. Going back to soft men. <laughs> now, if we could just 
<laughs> so when you guys are talking about it, I I like I don't mind when men aren't manly with what they do on a day to day basis. I don't care about that. It's just when mentally they're little bitches that bugs me. I I grew up in Australia. It was very different to LA. I can't I can't relate. I'm trying to be m- more soft. I'm no, just like me. I'm trying to not let things give me the ick because sometimes guys will say things to me or they'll text me. I'm like, you're done. I can't. <laughs> you're done. Like, Good. there's just... Good for you. Stay with it, baby lumps. Like, I can't. Just See, if a guy coined baby lumps... Write it out. He'd be done immediately. Uh, I, I don't think I'm done. <laughs> I think... I don't think you're done. Ikea sounds nice. <laughs> what are some icks you have, Harlan? Do you have any icks? Icks? Yeah. Do... do like do women do anything that make you, you know, that give you the ick, that turn you off straight away? Oh, God. Women that are um, compulsively, like, taking Instagram and pictures of themselves with their phones. People that are more in love with themselves mm-hmm. than the person they're trying to create a bond with. Mm-hmm. Men do that here, too. Oh, yeah, men do it, too. Anyone who does it. But I'm, I ain't dating the, the man. That's true, yeah. Daddy been dating a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got me, baby lump. <laughs> I I I I inferred that. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying over here, mm-hmm. baby lump. I please don't on the camera, face. Ah! Please. Ah, can we? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Is your okay? Okay. Okay. My contact lens just went right down to my colon. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I don't like women or men who take a bunch of selfies either. <clears throat> I, I don't even like I doing hate it. it. I hate it. And it's my job. And I feel very uncomfortable. It's I, okay if you're doing it on your own time. Or, or, don't be doing it yeah. when you're with someone. When you're with someone, you're supposed to be giving your time to them, mm-hmm. not to yourself. Mm-hmm. And when I see people do this, it's like, what did you say? Just done? Is that what you said? Yeah, just done. Mm-hmm. Just it's like, just... I don't. Yeah. Try it again. <laughs> I would. It's 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 my job, and I would never. I would never take a photo in front of a boyfriend ever. That's like work, and then I would just be completely present with the person in front of me. I all the girls Good who love for you. It's too self-absorbed. It's it's incredible. You're with yourself all the time. All the you time. You have to do this when you've dedicated three hours to be with your boyfriend. You mm-hmm. can't do this when he's gone. And I, I feel awkward in general taking photos. I do too. As a job, and I'm like, I don't. You this do is it not, as a job. Yeah, like modeling and social media and stuff. You like model that. too. Yeah. <sighs> who are you with? I'm with Wilhelmina. Really? Yeah. I'll see you at the Christmas party. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, I was with Ford, but I bailed out after Fashion Week last year. Oh, and Fashion Week's the worst. Oh, fuck. They put me in the same green room with Naomi Campbell. I was like, fuck you. There's only room for one set of Victoria's Secret wings in this room, Biosh. That's true. How'd you yeah. take that? I walked. I walked Good down for the you. catwalk Boundaries. and right out the fucking door. Yeah. <sighs> mm-hmm. What kind of preparation do you have to do before a show like that? H. H? Yeah. What do you mean, H? <laughs> Preparation H. Oh, you do? Before, okay, so nothing falls out while you're on the catwalk? No, I just, what I do is I, I fast yeah. about a week before Fashion Week. I purge. Just stop. Just, I'm just going to yeah, like tie your hands just wants else. to go at me. Like. But uh, yeah, basically a lot of crunches. I'll do a lot of crunches. And I don't mean bending over. I mean, I'll go to 7-Eleven and buy the crunch mm-hmm. chocolate bars. And I'll yeah. eat a few boxes of those, purge them up. Roll around in the chocolate, shower off, and then uh, go to uh, what's your face's house, uh, Heidi Klum's house, mm-hmm. and we'll do roundhouse kicks on each other's faces just to soften up the meat. Uh. And then I'll go to Wolfgang Pops, have him slap a lasagna around on my big purple flubbery ass, and then we'll. Whoa. Was it making a move? <laughs> I just kept touching it too much. It's giving me anxiety at this point. Are you getting anxiety, baby no, I, mom? I just know what's going to happen. You know, it's like you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. <laughs> you know the outcome. I know the outcome. That's interesting. Not a lot of people know the outcome in life, but the fact that you do says a lot to me about you. <laughs> Certainly you don't. I just want to move this away from you. Okay. See, that's a, that's an interesting thing. She cares about my yeah. welfare and good Someone has to at this point. Someone has to. Yeah. You know? She was looking at you. Or about, you know, potential lawsuits with this 
<laughs> podcast. Yeah. Someone has to be on it. We are on it. Yeah. What? Just I like that prep though. your eyes. You can see a lot in someone's eyes. Okay. What do you see? Kindness. Thank you. What else? Gentle person. Okay. Nice. Oh. Loving. Yeah. Tender. Yeah. And Any just... bad things? Mm, not really. I'm not feeling any bad things. It's there's a there's a sweetness to you. Aww, she's Thank very you. sweet. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, we all have our demons. I mean, behind the sweetness, there's probably some darkness, but it's not coming out of you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you're a dark person. We all have dark elements to our personalities, but with you, you radiate a kindness, warmth. Thank you. Very warm, loving person. Thank yeah. you. I you did well. Th that's a massive compliment. It is, and me. I mean it. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. What do we see in his eyes? You can Maybe do this one. <laughs> Baby lumps? Sugar lips? I don't know. What do you see in my eyes? I don't give away a lot, so mm. good luck, but... <laughs> Don't tilt your head like a pug. At <laughs> <laughs> like a pug? Did you see she went? I know, puppy would have been cute, but you went with pug. Pug, That's yeah. Bald. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see kindness. Yeah? I see sensitivity. I see very mis like mischievous but playful. You, you seem like a really good person. But you also seem... Oh, there's a mischievous mischievousness. Right now you just give mischievousness. Yeah. What about you, Gabby? I don't ask questions I don't know I don't want to know the answer to. Well I've learned in life. And I'm good without, you know. Well can I say I'm not asking this question. Mia. Okay, okay, okay. But I, I will say something. So I went on a little Harland uh viewing party last night and this morning Are you to serious? do my research. I yeah. I who that was in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just stalked you for the last 15 hours. Oh. It, it's what I do. But I oh, did I God. did fall in love with you. Hello. I did fall in love with you. I thought you Maybe were so, you were so cute and funny, but then oh. you're very real and you're like a very genuine person at the same time. You can tell that you you you're very insightful and you try to be the best version of yourself thank you i agree that's so nice <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny nice because anything like, they, they will, to anyone my entire life they, they will start that a lot of the podcasts they'll start with you being very funny and putting on an act but then as you ease into it like something real happens and, mm -hmm. and you like really get down to who you are as a person you like connect with them and then you go back to being funny and silly which i think is just all great that was so nice. It was nice. Thank you. You're welcome. How does wow. that make you feel? It makes me feel good because it's uh, it's accurate. Not to be pompous, but that's how I try to go through life. And I like to, you know, I've learned uh, it's a good thing to take a compliment. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes not easy, but uh, so thank you. You're welcome. Nice. That was very nice. Can I like write that down to use on other people later, please? <laughs> it's like nicer than anything I've ever said to anyone. Really? Yeah. yeah. I like to try to make people feel good. But I also, I mean it, so I'm, I can't lie. But I like to try to build people up if I can. Thank you. You're welcome. You did. Mm -hmm. Good. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Good. Yes, I was very excited to have you on today. What did you watch specifically? What what movies? Um, not movies, because I've seen some of the movies. I actually, um, obviously, I've seen Dumb and Dumber, and uh, uh, what is what is the other like really popular something one? About Mary. Yeah, there's something about Mary. Sorority Boys was one of my favorites growing you up. You love that? I loved Sorority Boys. That one was a good God. one. Yeah. Do you have any good stories on that one? <sighs> I had to dress up like a woman. You did a good job at it. Yeah. Um, of that we can pull up. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting because as an actor, you know, when you get a role, you kind of have to find that character in there somewhere. You got to search for it on one level, and you have to let it find you on another level. 
But when you oh, get in, be gorgeous. when you get into all the stuff a woman has to get into, the dresses, the makeup, the hair, the character sort of just comes to you. It's it's very interesting. It's like when you dress up real nice. Like let's say you go to a red carpet event or a wedding or a top tier event. Sometimes when you put that beautiful gown or dress on, right, it transforms you a little bit yeah. mentally. Mm-hmm. Same with men. When we put tuxedos on, we go from just being a guy to like, we feel like James Bond, sort yeah. of. Mm-hmm. You have that confidence. Right. It's just the, 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 the wardrobe. So when you are a man and you get into this woman stuff and not just the wardrobe, but we did the mascara, the lips, the eyebrows, the wigs. They even waxed us for this movie. All three of us you? had to go get our bodies waxed. It was ridiculous. So so it just, the, the character, when you get into all that, it just sort of, it, it finds you more than you find it to a degree. And it was pretty, pretty fascinating. I did another movie as a woman called Mr. Head Mistress, where I had to play a woman. And it was the same it's a pretty fascinating thing as an actor to feel feminine feel it come to you when you're not. It isn't even typically. feminine. It, it's all the uh, all the acrements, all the, all the all the things that you guys do that are foreign to us. We mm-hmm. don't put foundation on. We don't get our lips done. We don't get eyeliner. We mm-hmm. don't get wigs and bras. Like they put fake boobs on us and bras and pantyhose and dresses and like. When you get all that gear on you, it's just like you you sort of transform a little bit. Yeah. So it was it was really as an actor, it was quite interesting and actually really fun. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How was I look like was? my mom there. My after this movie, my dad <laughs> dated me for three months. It was unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. I had two had two kids. I have two bastard incest kids. Yeah. <laughs> What are their names? We have Disney to thank for that. Donnie and Hammerhead. And Hammerhead just got, he had an eye brace on his face for about 14 years and he just got it off last week. His eyes finally came back together. Yeah. Wow. Little Donnie. You know. He sounds adorable. Oh, he loves, every Sunday we feed him baby manatee. He loves it. Wow. What's your favorite role you've played? There is no favorite. No they're, favorite. They're all because they're all their own. They're like your children, right? Mm-hmm. So you you, you have these characters. Child, sure. You you just love them all. Even it, it doesn't matter if they're a big role or a small role. You just I for me personally, I just I can't give you a favorite one because they're all just so near and dear to me. You know, they come from within, mm-hmm. and so they're part of you. So you can't really separate. You know, for me. Yeah. Do you always want to be an actor? Uh, yeah, I, I, I I sort of, um, wanted to be, but I sort of knew I would be. It was weird. I didn't necessarily go, I want to be an actor, but I remember as a kid, I would skip school and go watch the movies, you know, in the afternoon by myself. And I'd be in these huge movie theaters because there'd be no one there in the afternoon on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And there'd be like 12 other people and I'd be watching these movies and I'd just be sitting there going... I'm going to be up there one day. Like, I didn't know why or how. It, it was just like a voice. Like, I'm going to, and I'm looking around. Can I validate? And no one was around. But <laughs> I just sort of knew. And yeah. so, so caring with that energy, I thought, okay, I'm feeling this. So I guess I want to be that too. But mm-hmm. it was sort of just this inner thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Just intuition. You just always knew what you were going to be. I, I, yeah, I just, I guess. I don't even know. It just sort of, it was like, here we go, you know? Yeah, I've heard a few people say that. They just like in- instinctively knew when they were a kid they were going to be the profession they ended up being. You yeah, know, yeah, Usually in entertainment, which is just obviously such a hard industry. And you can't, you know, go to college and get a degree for it, which you yeah. know, guarantees you a job in, you know, the medical field or legal field or whatever it is. You just knew you were going to be up that's on the right. screen. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Boom. Power slam. Was it thunder drop? Was it what you expected it would be? <laughs> oh yeah, it's everything and more. Yeah, you know? as I, amazing I, as. Yeah, it's just it's a it's a real um, privilege. It's it's a special thing, and I, I feel blessed to do it. I don't take it for granted, and uh, even more is the the effect that it puts out into the world that your what you do brings something to other people. It mm-hmm. brings them happiness or inspiration or joy, even if it's a little giggle. It's 
it's better than someone that wakes up in the morning and shoots somebody in the head, you know. So mm-hmm. it is. It it's is nice to to put good good fuel into the into the ether, you know. Mm-hmm. Make people smile, make people laugh. Yeah, just improve that day a little bit. That's yeah. right. That's right, baby lumps. Is there anything left you want to do? Oh yeah. What? Everything. What? Oh. What's man. on your bucket list? In terms of like Korea. I mean, <laughs> I've done so much of it, but, you know, I just, I, I think I just want to take it as it comes, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I have i can't think of something that I really haven't been able to accomplish, but I'm, I guess I'm just leaving the door open for new possibilities and I'll conquer them when they show up, you know? You could be the new Mad Max, you yeah. know? Or Maxi Pads, and she play a woman so Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Mr. Maxi Mistress, how about that? <laughs> that would be amazing if you were the new... <laughs> Mr. Max Mistress. Mr. Maxi Pad. You know? It, it would be Sorority more believable. Sorority Max. <laughs> <laughs> it would be more believable, for hey, sure. Hey, I, I would be up for it, but I don't know how tough you're going to be if you're Mad Max and you don't have a chin, you know? <laughs> It's just not a good look. You see a pelican rolling across the desert. And... <laughs> but what are you talking about? Charlize Theron does it all with one arm. I know. You can do it without a chin. It's fine. Yeah, but that one arm is like a Terminator arm. She's got the fake like robot arm. That's a lot more macho than a guy who looks like he has a waddle. I don't know. Just, you know, I feel like one swift like right hook to her side, you know, armless side would just take her out real quick. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's the one good thing. You can't give me a right hook because I got no chin, so it just goes right back. <laughs> That's a superpower then. Yeah. It's a superpower. You're good. No chin guy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wow. Immediately no. <laughs> it's down. like a child. <laughs> like just, a little toddler. No. It was making Put a it move. down. <laughs> I feel good. I feel a little bit battered. Like I feel a little b- bit beat up by yeah. this, by the equipment. Not by us? But not by you. You okay. guys couldn't have win. been um, more gracious and wonderful and great energy, great kindness. Get I feel that like, a Yelp review? I feel like one of the <laughs> girls, you know? Even though I played a girl, I yeah. sort of now I feel like a girl. I like, was actually wondering, like, during that film, because you had so many women surrounding you in, so, um, in all of the scenes, did you connect with them? And, like, would, would you guys all kind of have, like, little girly moments off camera? There was a scene in Sorority Boys where um, we all had to sit in the sorority house in a circle and go around the room and say our names and who we were and everything. And in that moment, it it felt very like I was just one of the girls with yeah. the girls. And um, it was a very serene moment. I tapped into some sadness. I'd just gone through a divorce, and so I, I tapped into that sadness, and I was able to inject that into the scene, and it was very real and very, uh, I felt very connected as a guy mm-hmm. playing a girl. I felt like I was a girl in a in a circle of girls. It yeah. was pretty interesting. Yeah, That's fun. That's I like think, girlhood. That's I, the best part about being a girl. I think that that must be fun for men because at the on the Cabo trip there was one straight man and sixteen women, nothing happened. <laughs> but we're all What's drunk. What's wrong with the guy? We're we're all drunk on our way back from Idiot. the restaurant and Whitney uh, Houston. I want to dance with somebody. Comes on. Every single woman in the car is singing it and dancing. Like we all freak out, and I look over, and the one straight guy is just vibing out with everybody else, <laughs> and it was one of the cutest things I've ever seen. That and then Spice Girls came on next, and he joined in with that one too. So you realized he was gay at that point. <laughs> I don't think he was gay. No, no. Sixteen <laughs> girls, nothing happened, and he's bopping to Whitney Houston <laughs> and the Spice Girls. I mean, that guy. I mean, bopping might be is so gay he needs to get a Actually, tracheotomy and fuck his own throat. You know what? <laughs> he was just—he was—he was one of the girls in that moment. He was—he was a, he was a okay. safe place for them. Sure, he—I'm he, sure he hit on them after. I don't know. I'm not going to comment. You can say what you want. You've had a very long, success, successful career. I'm trying to push my cancellation like a little bit further out, so I'm not going to comment anything. <laughs> but do you know the words to Spice Girls? Yes, of course they do. Just no. Did he? Did he? He seemed like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just 
question. You know? Do you know the words to you Spice Girls? To, yeah. You no. Know, I'll tell you what I want. I know I the I uh, 11 herbs and spices no, of KFC, don't. and that's as far as I need to go. I wasn't a Spice Girls kid. Mm. I feel like everyone knows that one song. Wannabe? The, the wannabe? Oh, yeah, like, wannabe, like the chorus to wannabe, wannabe, for sure. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. a Spice Girls go. In Australia, it's called Wallaby, by the way. <laughs> it is, you know. What, what, what type of girl? Did you like Britney Spears? No, I had a poster of Eminem on my bedroom wall. He was my first crush. Oh, God. And I had was... a fat girlfriend who had a poster <laughs> of a Snickers bar on her wall. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my mom was like, please, can you like Backstreet Boys or NSYNC? And I was like, I'm going to marry Eminem. So then, you know, I just was like trying to go- like trying to look up like the lyrics to Eminem songs, which explains a lot. But, you know, she was like, please, can you just have a crush on Justin Timberlake? Like, please. Oh, what about Jonathan Taylor Thomas? Where was he? Who's that? Who's who's Jonathan Taylor Thomas? Baby lumps, come on. Who, no, should I you feel ever bad? see the movie The Hitcher? No. What is Better that? Get into it. <laughs> Better get into it. Rutger Hauer. I don't know who this guy is. He was the star of The Hitcher. Rutger Hauer picked him up on a deserted desert highway one night. This is- tortured him and tormented him. Tried to cut his eyes out with a switchblade. No, he's actually not kidding. It's a very sad story. Yeah. Wait, how did we get here? <laughs> it's the magic of baby long. <laughs> <laughs> but every okay. every every young girl was in love with him. I and had he was a psychopath? Huh? And he was a psychopath? Yeah. It came out. I, later, I would be sure. Which is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I would be too. I get it. <laughs> you know, I'm always way more attracted to the villain in the story than the, than the you know, the movie than the protagonist. Have you seen the movie Hook? Oh With yeah, Robin Williams. Yeah, Captain Hook all day. Are you kidding me? I had a crush on Captain Hook when I was younger. You like seen a prosthetic the arm? Yeah. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, he was hot. Yeah, he was. You get it. Is that all your hair? Yeah, this is my hair. Good, good genetics. Hair plugs from India. No, this is my hair, yeah. No, really? Yeah, it's my you hair. so much hair. I know, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do with it. I think you're doing a good job. Thanks. Yeah. Use a George Foreman grill. Mm. How, how does that work? You just put some olive oil down, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, press your head in it, close it. Your head it, goes and, in it? You don't just yeah. like lift the grill? Now you just stick your head in it, 45 seconds, off you go to work. Okay. All right. <laughs> Gotta be in it to win it. Yeah. Oh, baby lump. It'll smell good. It'll like, smell like a grilled cheese. You got that you know? right. No. We'll see you at midnight. <laughs> That's the truly. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to talk about or promote or plug or anything? The only thing I would mention is my uh, my podcast, The Harland Highway. You know, yeah. if you want to uh, check it out, folks, and uh, come watch it and subscribe and uh, have some laughs and, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. It's really good. For, I was, like I said, I've been watching Thank it you. Like, all Thank last you. night and this morning, and it was very entertaining. Thank you. We have mm-hmm. a good time. So Had yeah. me laughing a lot. Check it out and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. live it up a little. Yeah. Ikea. Go go check out Ikea as well. Yeah. Get over there. Get on your back and swim. Get yourself an Allen. Well, let's just cut it there. Does Harlan... Do you want to do our sign out? Sure. (laughs) Thank you. Go ahead. Whatever you want to do. We hate doing it. Yeah. You do? Yeah. We sound like music reporters. It It sounds very unnatural. Hey, gang. Thanks for tuning in today. We sure hope you had a good time. And if you get the chance... Get over to Arby's, shove your head through the drive-thru window, and let it rip. (laughs) 